We no free of that, no bull book, no dopey kanka Go for your army, go for your tanker Go for your ow, go for your ow It's hard to think of dancehall and not think of Vibes Cartel. The lyrical genius has to be one of the most consistent dancehall artists the world has ever seen. His work ethic, lyrical abilities and forward-thinking business-minded nature spurred him to become one of the world's most loved yet controversial artists. Here at Mogul Magazine, we look at the impeccable career of Adija Palmer, aka Vibes Cartel. Adija Palmer was born on the 7th of January in 1976 at Kingston's Victoria Jubilee Hospital and was one of six children. Originally from Waterhouse, Kingston, he was raised in the Waterford district in the community of Portmore, Jamaica. Adija attended Calibre High School in Kingston but was expelled as a teenager. Determined to continue his education, he completed his studies at a tutorial technical school. Adija had two uncles who were aspiring musicians. From a young age, they introduced him to a variety of music, ranging from country and western classics to Sam Cooke and the legendary Ninja Man who became one of his musical heroes. By the age of 10, his favourite artists included Ninja Man, Papa San, Will Smith, KRS-One and Charlie Chaplin. Adija would regularly study their songs word for word and later began performing them to his friends. He decided he wanted to be a DJ and began writing his own lyrics when he was 11. Eager to show his skills, Adija and his friends regularly attended the weekly gong talent show at the Coney Amusement Park on the outskirts of Kingston. Adija and his friends never won the competition and were always gonged off the stage whenever they got the chance to perform. Undeterred and undefeated by his weekly failure to impress the talent show audience, Adija decided to develop his skills and concentrate on winning over his local community of Waterford. With a clear goal in mind, on weekends he would practice DJing on the neighbourhood sound systems, Soul Signal and Electric Force. In 1993, Adija recorded his first single, Love That Woman, for Alvin Reeves' One Heart label under the name Adi Banton, a name he chose in tribute to his idol and role model, Buju Banton. He recorded several more tracks for local producers while developing his craft. In 1996, he and his two friends, Mr. Lee and a singer called Escobar, decided to form a group. One night after watching a movie about Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar and his infamous cartel, Adija came up with the name for his trio, Vibes Cartel. Although they were friends, the group did not last long. It was during this time Adija became a solo artist taking on the name Vibes Cartel in an altered form. In 1998, Cartel performed at a stage show, Champions in Action, in his hometown, Portmore. Here he was noticed by popular international dancehall DJ Bounty Killer from the Alliance. So vibes cartel, are you mash up champion in action? So make them know. Up to the time, you hear me. He's the president, any more president, and element, and bad element, yard man, boom dunk, element, and resident, and done parliament. Read him, chap. Well, after me tell them, sir, to run the country and don't just run the country. The young cartel quickly became Bounty Killer's protege and began writing lyrics for Bounty Killer, Elephant Man and other members of the Scare Them crew. He also collaborated with Bounty Killer on the famous hit Gal Clown and Girls Like Mine. Vibes Cartel's new role as Killer's protégé caught the attention of the public and led to a massive career rise. In 2002, Cartel recorded his solo singles and released a string of best-selling hits such as Most High, Guns Like Mine, Bad Mine, Bust Me Gun Like Nuttin and War Organizer. He also had a string of successful collaborations with singer Wayne Marshall, including New Millennium, Why and Why Again. This unprecedented debut led to Vibes Cartel being crowned 2002 DJ of the Year at Stone Love's 30th anniversary, a feat unmatched by any new dancehall artist. 
Although Cartel rarely does dance tunes like Elephant Man or Beanie Man, he quickly became the next big thing in dance hall. In terms of singles sold, Cartel had the second best year on the 2003 reggae charts, outsold only by his alliance member Elephant Man. During this period, he released his groundbreaking Up To The Time album on UK record label Greensleeves. He was featured twice on the Def Jam Jamaica project and nominated for Source, Vibe and UK MOBA awards. Later that year, Cartel made international headlines with a planned onstage clash with Ninja Man during the annual dancehall festival Sting. So Ninja! Come on, no! Come Cartel recorded and released two more albums, Up To The Time in 2004 and JMT in 2005. Following differences with record label Greensleeves, Vibes Cartel changed his name to Addy The Teacher near the end of 2006. All new material he produced was under his new name. Greensleeves continued to release his older unreleased music under the name Vibes Cartel. As Cartel continued to rise up the dance hall ranks, tension grew between him and Bounty Killer. Their dispute was solidified after Cartel attended Beanie Man's wedding to Bounty's ex-girlfriend, The Angel. Adding salt to the wounds, Cartel recorded a song with The Angel called You Know Your Baby Father. From here, there was no turning back. Once Vibes left the alliance, Idonio also left because he took Vibes' side. This prompted a falling out with Busy Signal. Idonia then went on to record a song, Adi Ami Daddy Who Wan Vex Wan Vex. After falling out with Bounty Killer over the Beanie Man situation, Carter immediately recorded a series of diss tracks targeting Bounty and his new protege, Mavado. In 2006, Carter and Mavado had a vicious war of words. Carter expressed his disdain for the Gully God through songs like Mavado de Failure, Then I Start War I'm Dead, and Then My Pussy Pun the Backfield. Vibes was allegedly the head of the territorial gangland in Portmore known as the Gaza, and Mavado was the head of the gully side. Due to their feud, a physical war arose in the streets between people in the two areas. Fans loyal to each artist quickly took part as well. Even their young fans and entire schools were claiming gully or Gaza. Supporters outside of Jamaica and in other Caribbean countries such as Trinidad began to break out into physical war as well, which resulted in stabbings and street fights. In 2007, Cartel founded the Portmore Empire, which included young artists from his hometown Portmore. They all recorded under his label, Adi Jaheem Records slash Not Nice Productions. In 2009, following the Summit of the Americas, the Jamaican government desperately called for meetings between Vibes Cartel and Mavado, demanding them to end their war. Since then, both artists have turned away from the war songs and focused on different topics. Cartel's content focused more on women, while Mavado focused on uplifting his people. His 2009 single, Life We Live In, was a call for peace to end the animosity between the two. In celebration of the end of their feud, a peace concert was planned to take place in Barbados. The concert was going to be headlined by Carter and Mavado, but it was later cancelled by the country's cultural minister. In 2010, Carter released Clark's. This song turned out to be a huge hit on the international market, urging him to record two follow-up singles, Clark's 2 and Clark's 3, Where Will You Have? The song also showcased his new protege, Pop Khan. Cartel had even more success when he recorded his next album, Pan de Gaza 2.0. The album had successful singles such as Rampin' Shop, which featured Spice and Life Sweet. Rampin' Shop was such an international hit, American singer-songwriter Neo, the original creator of the beat, called for the song to be taken down from all online platforms. The song was also deemed controversial by the Jamaican government, who called for it to be banned from all radio stations on the island. The album Kingston Story followed the next year with Brooklyn producer Dre Skull, whose singles became chart toppers.
Being an infamous ladies' man, he launched a condom line called Daggerin in 2008. In the same year, the mogul-minded DJ launched his own rum brand called Street Vibes with partner Corey Todd. A dispute between the partners stopped the production of Street Vibes rum in 2011, but was resumed in 2012 after the two put their differences behind them. Another successful venture for the dancehall artist was launching his own reality TV show, Teacher's Pet, which aired on the CBM Jamaica broadcast channel. The show was popular and we believe he was the first musician on the Jamaican island to have his own show. Unfortunately, the show was discontinued after his arrest in 2011. He co-authored a book called The Voice of the Jamaican Ghetto, Incarcerated But Not Silenced. He released the book with business associate Michael Dawson in 2012 while still in jail. Cartel was not short of lovers, with thousands of women from across the globe literally throwing themselves at his feet. His music often demonstrated his love for having many women on the go at once. He married New York bank supervisor Stacey Ann Alicia Elliott in 2006 in a private ceremony in Crossroads, Kingston. The wedding didn't last long and the couple ended their two-year marriage with a divorce in 2008 due to allegations of Stacey giving birth to a son that was fathered by another man. Currently, Cartel is married to Tanisha Shorty Johnson, with whom he has three sons. It is widely reported that Cartel has seven children, five sons and two girls, with one of his daughters whom he is yet to meet. In 2011, Carter came under fire for bleaching his skin. He became a proud advocate for skin bleaching and even had hit songs like Cake Soap and Colouring Book where he speaks about women loving his lighter toned complexion, saying it's pretty like a colouring book. Skin bleaching is unfortunately widely practiced yet widely frowned upon in Jamaican culture. Although Cartel has had an amazing musical career and journey, he is currently serving life in prison for the alleged murder of Clive Lizard Williams. He was arrested for carrying marijuana in September 2011 and was later in prison for the alleged murder of Jamaican businessman and music promoter Barrington Burton. He was granted bail in March 2013 but remained in jail on charges for the alleged murder of Clive Lizard Williams in August 2011. There is lots of speculation surrounding the circumstantial evidence of the case, with rumours of dodgy witnesses and unfair treatment by the prosecution team. Cartel has appealed his conviction on a number of occasions to no avail. In 2008, he won an award at the Caribbean Music Awards. He also won three EME awards in 2009, Male DJ of the Year, Lyricist and Songwriter of the Year, and Song of the Year for Ramping Shop featuring Spice. Cartel has always been in high demand and have collaborated on songs with Jay-Z and Pharrell, Missy Elliott, M.I.A., Buster Rhymes, Dipset, Pitbull, Lord, Wizkid, Kalash and Sean Kingston. Vibes Cartel is reported to have a net worth of 5 million US dollars. Vibes Cartel is a legend and a lyrical genius and we hope he sees better days soon. Vibes Cartel, Mogul Magazine salutes you. Yeah.